I'd say one of the key ingredients that has gotten us to where we are now, which I agree is much, much better than we were uh, 10 years ago, is from public stakeholders that have put the heat on the delivery system to get better. Public stakeholders across a very broad array of, uh, of sectors. And I would say uh, that that's going to be an increasingly important part of continued progress. And my, um, my hope is that that heat will come with knowledge and understanding. That first of all, this is, this, there are no quick fixes here. Checklists work in some isolated instances, but they are not a panacea. Uh, technology writ large is not a panacea. It needs to be employed carefully with careful attention to process redesign so you don't introduce as many new problems as old ones that you solve. So recognizing this is a long road, that the commitment to start on the journey is the most important step for all of the organizations in the delivery system. Uh, the cultural change that uh, we've talked a little bit about cannot be overstated as how important it is. And we've made some missteps there. We've heard a lot of talk about how a safety culture is really a blame-free culture. Well, high reliability organizations are not blame-free cultures. What they have is a way of separating out the kinds of mistakes that everybody makes every day because we're human that we should be learning from, that's the blame-free part, from the other behaviors and mistakes that are so egregious that if you don't deal with them with disciplinary action, you lose the trust of all of the caregivers in the organization. So uh, that is a problem that we need to tackle straightforwardly and honestly. For example, one, uh, two or three of the hospitals in our hand hygiene project got to the point where after all of the process improvements they put in place, one of the problems they still had was lack of accountability. And they actually put into their physician credentialing programs penalties for repeated violations of hand hygiene protocols and have a number of physicians now on disciplinary plans that eventually lead to revocation of privileges if that pattern of unacceptable behavior is not rectified. When other caregivers see physicians or other senior people blowing by opportunities to wash their hands, you completely undermine the safe culture that you're trying to Im embed in order to make that behavior routine and, uh, and part of the safe culture. The, the last thing I would say is that the deployment of these tools is an absolutely essential part of the overall progress toward, uh, toward improvement. And we need to recognize as we do that where models exist that where consistent excellence has been established and not lose sight of the fact that we have, in fact, achieved consistent excellence in a number of small, isolated, but very important areas for us to emulate and replicate as we go forward. One example is if you look back 10 years, uh, hospitals were not collecting any data on any standardized quality measure in any way, shape, or form. They resisted the effort to collect those data, resisted the effort to make them public, and they weren't going to change anything based on some number that came out of, a, uh, out of a computer cruncher. Today, now, with the program actually the Joint Commission started called Core Measures, CMS, Medicare has picked it up, we now have achieved for a variety of these measures, like aspirin and beta blockers for patients with heart attack that save thousands of lives, not only high levels of performance, the national average on those measures across the thousands of hospitals that report to the Joint Commission is 98%. But we've also seen incredible narrowing of the variation. So the percentage of hospitals on those two measures, 2008, that are themselves over 90% performance is 97%. That is the definition of high reliability. High performance, no variability, maintained over long periods of time. Those are the models, the examples we need to seek out and use in designing our new systems.